Hey everybody, Jeff Schneider here. In today's video, I'm going to show you a new chord progression that I made up, and there's a beat behind it. I'm going to do some soloing on it later on, explain how it all fits together. So let's get started. One, two, three. go that's the chord progression now I'm gonna explain what's going on here harmonically first we're kind of in the key of E flat major for the most part there's a couple of chords that branch out of that a little bit but we're gonna mostly be in E flat major so we start with G minor 9 uh, you don't need to use this voicing specifically uh, you especially don't need that that G in the left hand because the bass player is gonna be playing the G but it fills out the chord a little bit so I'm gonna leave it in there for now in the right hand, we have the, the flat 7, there is the 9, the flat 3, and the 5 on top. And we're going to use the same exact voicing. We're, we're going to go up a whole step to A minor 9. Now, here's one of those chords that doesn't really fit in the, the E flat major key. But that's okay. It's, it's one of those instances where you're using a similar voicing, or the same exact voicing, actually, as a, uh, a passing chord, really. Because what we're going to is B flat minor 9. Again, same voicing. Roots, flat 7, 9, flat 3, 5. So that A minor 9 is a passing chord in this instance. And what we're going to do next is go to E flat 13 sus. You could also call this D flat major 7 over E flat, but um, I'm going to call this E flat 13 sus. You have the, the root there in the left hand again. Flat 7, 9, that's the 4, that's sus 4, and then on top is the 13, C, and this is over an E flat. Uh, now, the reason this works so well is because e, uh, this B flat minor 9 is the 2 chord to this 5 chord, E flat 13 sus. But here's the question. If we're in the key of E flat major, why are we playing a 2-5 in, well, what looks to be A flat, right? Because if B flat's the 2 chord and E flat is the 5 chord, that sounds a lot like A flat major. And the reason is because A flat major is the 4 chord on uh, in an E flat key in the in the key of E flat. If you play the E flat major scale, you get to that A flat, that's the fourth scale degree. So we're setting up the 4 chord essentially um, using what's called a secondary dominant chord. I've made some videos on that concept in the past, so I'll I'll um, I'll reference them down below in the description. Uh, so we're doing a 2 5 1 to A flat major 9 actually. So we end up there. I'll play uh, what we have so far. And a little bit slower. G minor 9, A minor 9, B flat minor 9, E flat 13 sus, and then A flat major 9. Very basic voicing on the A flat major 9, just 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Okay, let's continue on. Um, then we're going to have a melody note in here which is G, it's still considered A flat major 9 at this point. But when we land on the E flat, this is where the chord changes. We're actually going to go to this uh, G7 sharp 5. Here's the G down there, there's the flat 7, there's the 3rd, and there's the sharp 5, D sharp. You could also call that a flat 13, but I'm going to call it sharp 5. And you don't need to play that G in the bass again. It's the root. The bass player's got it covered. Um, now this uh, this G7 sharp 5 is going to go to C minor. And this is a nice voicing for C minor. This is actually C minor 11. We have C, G, D, E flat, F, and B flat. That's the 1, the 5, the 9, the 3, the 11, and then the flat 7 on the top there. And that, that chord that we came from, the, uh, the G7, that's the 5 of C minor. Now let's think back in the key of E flat major for a second. C minor great chord. It's the sixth chord, the relative minor. So it makes total sense that we're landing there. We're just setting that chord up um, with a, uh, a secondary, another secondary dominant. The secondary dominant of C minor is G7 sharp 5. Okay, now I'll play up until that point. Okay, 
next chord. There's the C minor 11, and now D flat major 9. We could call this the flat 7 major 7. I say that because if we're in the key of E flat, D flat, I'll say that slower. If we're in the key of E flat major, D flat is the flat 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, flat 7. Got that? So D flat is the flat seven, and we're calling it a flat major set or flat seven major seven, because that's the kind of chord that I'm playing there. This is the the one, the three major seven. I'm doing the nine on top too, with that grace note from the six to the seven. Always works nicely. All right. do this little lick and we resolve to E flat major the one chord and notice I'm using the same voicing that I used for the D flat major nine chord just moving up a whole step bringing it home giving it that resolution there all right let's do the whole thing with the beat one two three uh. is that's the chord progression one other thing i want to talk about is the melody one of the reasons this chord progression or this whole thing works so well is because the melody makes a lot of sense i'll just i'll just play the melody first all right so it goes like this so let's talk about some of the reasons why this melody works so well so to start, the first phrase goes up and then it comes down. You have some nice balance there. Right? And then, this is a key part coming up right here. I repeat what I just played. If you guys have been watching some of my videos, you know how much I care about repetition and developing your phrases, developing your ideas, and repeating yourself is one of the easiest and best ways to do that. So this is what I do in the melody. I repeat that B flat, G, E flat, and then I end on the F there. Now that's an important point too because one thing you have to watch out for when writing good melodies is you don't want to overuse any one any one note too much. Meaning, if you're if all of your phrases end on the same note or if they start on the same note, you know I just said that repetition is a good thing, but you know as uh, as with anything, too much of a good thing is is not so great or whatever the expression is. But um, the nice thing about ending on that F is that we haven't really heard it featured so much yet in this melody. All right, let's uh, let's move on to some soloing now. I'm gonna switch over to a synth patch, and I'll do a little improvisation here, and we'll hear what that sounds like. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, so there's a little taste there. Um, so some of the things that I'm thinking about here, I'm gonna switch back over to piano so I can play chords and uh, and melody at the same time, or improvisation rather. So some of the stuff that I'm thinking about while improvising, in addition to just playing what I'm hearing in my head, is well, for starters, you know, you have the you have those first three minor seven chords up front. Now because it's the same voicing and it's a very parallel sort of movement going from the G minor to the A minor to the B flat minor. Um, one of the nice things that you could do is, is play a similar phrase throughout each of those three minor seven chords. 
So for instance, um, you could play something very simple like one, two, three, one, two, three. That's a nice way to start the solo. So like I said about the melody with repetition and building ideas, building some context, using the same phrase and just transposing it up to fit the chord that you're on is an excellent way to navigate a chord progression like that, which isn't so diatonic because as we said, you know, that A minor seven in particular doesn't really relate to the key of, of E flat major. So you want to play outside of the key of E flat major, but do so in a way where it still makes sense. And repeating yourself like that, even when you're transposing, is a great way to, to make sense while, while playing out of key. Alrighty, um, so once you get to the B flat minor, at that point, you've just got a 2 5 1 going to A flat major 7. So you can play any 2 5 1 line that you know. You know, anything's gonna work there. You want to make use of the notes that change, though. What I mean by that is when you go to the B flat minor, the notes that you really want to focus on or the ones that you want to make sure you play are going to be that. Well, first of all, the D flat is most important because the D flat is not in the key of E flat major. In E flat major, you have a D natural. So you really want to um, accentuate those notes that you are not that don't live in the original key. And that's gonna make it uh, sound and feel like you really know what you're doing because you're playing the notes that are very specific to the chord that's going on underneath your solo. And since we have a B flat minor seven chord, I'm definitely gonna make use of that, of that, D, um, that D flat note. So D flat is the minor third of B flat minor seven. All right, going forward, You've got the five chord, E flat major se uh, E flat seven to A flat major seven. Now, when you're on the A flat major seven, you can play any line there that you like. And this is a chord that does live within the context of E flat major. It's the four chord. So you're cool with like the e, e flat major scale or the A flat major scale even is gonna be okay. Uh, the next chord, however, is G altered or G7 sharp five. This is another instance where you want to make use or accentuate the notes that are a little bit out there. Specifically, the B. The B is the third of G7 sharp five, and the B is certainly not within the original E flat major key signature, so you want to make sure you play it. Now notice the B is also the third of the chord. It's the third of G7 sharp five. That's another reason to make sure that you use it because the, the third and also the seven of a chord define its sound uh, for the most part at least. They're the color tones. So if you make use of those tones while you're soloing, you're going to be able to, again, make it seem like you, you know what you're doing. This is another, another way of saying playing the changes, playing, playing changes. So when you go to that, that uh, G seven sharp five chord, you could play the G altered scale will work nicely. Uh, and then it resolves to C minor, very basic there. So the G altered scale works nicely leading into C minor. There's a very cliche line there. Um, that's good to know, even if it's been played a million times. So what's going on? What's after the uh, the C minor 11? I think it's D flat uh, major seven. And then it goes to E flat major seven. So on the D flat major seven, you can actually use a C minor pentatonic will work nicely. And that gives you that, that G there, which is the sharp 11. Which, uh, which, which sounds really good over this chord. And the C minor pentatonic scale on the D flat major seven chord could also work really well if you play C minor pentatonic on the C minor chord that came just before. It sounds like this. You could even play the same line. 
same scale, uh, same line, different chords, but it still works. Of course, then when you resolve to the E flat major seven chord, you could even continue the C minor pentatonic scale there too. All of those notes work. In fact, C minor pentatonic uh, makes up the same notes as uh, E flat major pentatonic. Check it out. Here's C minor pentatonic, C, E flat, F, G, B flat, and here's E flat major pentatonic, E flat, F, G, B flat, C. Um, of course, when you go to E flat major seven, you could also just play lines that you know that work on a major seven chord. But at the end of the day, like I, like I said before, you wanna be playing what you hear in your head. So one of the best things you can do is to play the chords on the piano or, or listen to a backing track and just sing. Because when you sing, you're getting the, the most direct connection to whatever it is that you hear. And once you can sing the solos, then you can figure out what you're singing. And eventually you kind of bypass the singing stage and you just go straight to playing. But you wanna be, you know, if you can even sing while you play, that can be very useful. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment. I'll try to get back to you. I know I've been a little bit bad with the comments lately, but I'm gonna try to get back into it now. But thank you for your, uh, your participation, your engagement, and watching the videos and commenting and liking and subscribing. I'll see you in the next video.